Hello, I'm Ben with LawnSense, and today we're going to show you how to program your Rainbird SST variant. So you'll notice right here, this is the 600i variant. This number right here is going to correspond with how many stations your controller will accept. So this specific model is a six station model. This is where you get the 600i. This one can be offered all the way up to 1200i. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to set clock. So that's always the first thing that I have people do. So this one right here, this will change. This up and down area will change the variable that is flashing. Okay. If you hold down one of the arrows, you can move through the entire clock just by using either one of the arrows. And then we'll go over to set date. Same thing. We're going to go through and set our year. This right here, this, these arrows right here are going to move through the entire calendar set. So if you hold it down, it should eventually start a fast run and that'll allow to take you to whatever date and time or whatever date, month and day that you need to set it for. So once you have that set, we're going to go over to zone one. Now this specific controller will allow you to set specific days and specific times for each individual station. This is not a controller we recommend for anybody. It's very complex to use, but you can get very custom with it if you know what you're doing. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're programming zone one. Zone 1 has a scheduled run time of 6 minutes, and it's going to start at 12 a.m. So the very first thing that we need to do is with this arrow right here, these two arrows will move the run time up and down. So if we need to add more or take more off, we would use these two. This arrow right here will adjust when it starts. So we're going to leave this one at 12 a.m. But once we have these values set, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here, and we're going to figure out how many days a week we want this zone to run. So this one's programmed to run Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If we want to take a day away, all we have to do is push it. When the light goes away, the day is not running. Push it again. When the light comes back, that day is on. So once we have this program the way we want, the next thing we're going to do is come over to how many times a day we want it to run. So this one's set for one time. We can go to two times. We can go to three times. We can go to four times. And then once you change the times, you can actually add days for each specific setup that you want. So we're going to go back to one, or we can do odd and even days, which a lot of people like. So now that we've got this one set, the next thing that you need to know about this controller, and this is another reason we don't recommend it, you'll see that we're on zone two. We have a zone runtime of seven minutes, which will bring that down to five to match the other one. We have a different start time now. So you have to make sure you have to keep track with how long you're running each of these stations because if you don't, you're going to stack these run times together and the controller is going to end up skipping it. It's going to end up double running it or it's going to end up not running at all depending on how it's set up. So we know that the other station is set up for five minutes. So we know that we have to be at least five minutes of lead time off of the other start time. So we cannot run zone two before 12.05 a.m. So we have to make sure it's at least five minutes past the other run time. Same thing, the days are here, the times are here, and it's the same thing all the way through. So this one's spaced at 30 minute intervals, and then this one's got some different settings from the customer. And that's pretty much how you set up each one of these stations. So the next thing you need to know is the seasonal adjustment. So this one's set at 50%. So what this percentage means, this percentage is off of the runtime interval. So Right now it's at 50%. If we take this arrow and we take it all the way up to 100%, which I guess it's not wanting to do. If we take that up to all the way to 100%, that's going to change it from a 5-minute runtime to a 10-minute runtime. So this percentage is based off of that. Same thing as if we went to 20%, it's going to take the 5 minutes down to 2.5 minutes. So that's going to be your seasonal adjustment. The rain delay is, is something you can use if your system is not equipped with a rain sensor. So what this will do, if, it's, if you have a scheduled runtime of Monday, 
and the day is Sunday and it rains and you don't have the rain sensor to give you the option to skip it, what you can do is you can tell it how long you want it to delay the schedule of running before it will pick the schedule back up. So if we set up for 24 hours, if our next runtime is 12 a.m. and it's 12 p.m. on the Sunday, it is going to skip this Monday because it's not going to allow the controller to run until 12 p.m. the following day. And you can move this up all the way up to, I believe, 72 hours. So you can skip up to three days. And the last thing you need to know how to do is if you want to water a zone by itself, all you need to do is pick the zone that you want to run. You hit this water now button and it'll say current watering and it'll run that zone for the selected time that that was there before we hit the button. Once you're done with it, you can flip it back to off, wait three to five seconds, it'll shut the zone off. And then the, once you flip the controller back, it'll resume the program that it had programmed. Now also, if you were to let this zone continue to run, and you flipped it back to automatic, didn't take it. Once it finishes that run of the allotted time that you program, once it finishes that, it will turn off and it'll go right back to its automatic program. And that's it.